So, George Lucas raped my childhood, and Ryan Johnson murdered it. Who says that Pizzagate isn't real, huh? So, uh, speaking of Star Wars, I've got some really super neat crap to show you, so... Let's get started. So, first things first... Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at this. I got six of these guys. Oh my gosh. So yeah, this uh, just came out on November 29th, and I got six of these so far. I'm going to be sending them out as Christmas gifts to people. So I put up an image gallery of this on my Tumblr account, and uh, Steve at SMKR took notice of it, and... Yes, one of those is for you, Steve. So, I've already opened this up. Um, of course, as always, it comes with stickers instead of decals, but you know what? Um, from what I understand, you can just paint the red, apply the sticker, and then paint the, the whole color, and then peel off the sticker, and then there you go. You can do that. And you might want to also distress the, the decals as well to kind of, you know, simulate the, the paint chipping. Um, you have a choice here of uh, different like bridges here. I'm not sure why they, they, they do that, but there you have it. Um, let me show you a closer view of these. Now this is the A1 runner. There's only two runners here. So as you saw the box it uh, is the same size, I believe, actually, of the Death Star. And where is my Death Star box? I'm not sure where it is. What the hell? I'll look for that later. Detail is just, just exquisite on this. This is so beautiful. So here is the, the bridge. And these are like, a, I think these were the, the docking rings to the either side of the ship. Or um, perhaps not. Uh, maybe not. Um, any case, uh, this is just really, really great. You have really great engine detail. Really fantastic. Um, here you can see there are some of the escape pods that have been jettisoned. As uh, R2-D2 and C-3PO took one down to the surface of Tatooine to escape. Oh yeah, here we go. These are, I think these are, these are the one of the docking rings on the side. Really cool. So, you have 11 of these engines here. Suppose you could drill out and then uh, put, like put little SMDs, yellow SMDs in there, and then have the wires coming through here and then out the bottom of this kit, perhaps. Uh, there is, the, at the bottom here, wait, where is it? I guess this is it here. Or where was it? Perhaps this is the bottom here. There is a part here that looks like a loudspeaker or something rather. And uh, that would be plugging into the bottom, and where you can pop it out and then put the stand on. Uh, this has just the regular black stand. If you get this blockade runner with uh, Millennium Falcon as a set, those come with the clear stands and the sticker for the for the name, which is really nice. I elected not to get that because I already have the Millennium Falcon. So, speaking of which, speaking of which, uh, the Millennium Falcon, the 350 scale Millennium Falcon, uh, it actually, uh, in, in case you weren't aware, the Blockade Runner, aka the Corellian Corvette, was the original um, Millennium Falcon, basically, but with like, a, imagine instead of the 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 bridge here as you know it it actually had the Millennium Falcon 
cockpit instead. It was maybe a little bit too much like Space 1999, so they decided to, to not go with that. Anyhow, if you perhaps were to modify this, it's about the same size. You could possibly put the Millennium Falcon cockpit on here, and you can make your own Ralph McQuarrie prototype Millennium Falcon. So, because that's basically what they did. They just changed the, the bridge, the head on the spaceship and uh, turn it into the Corellian Corvette, a.k.a. Blockade Runner. So, very, very cool. Um, there is an article in Model Graphics Magazine, the December issue, that shows how to light up one of these kits. And as I talked to the, the Bandai, um, uh, R&D guy, oh shoot, what's his name? Nagasawa, I believe his name is. We're talking about possible strategies on, you know, if, if he wanted to light up these engines. So, in the magazine, somebody had drilled out the, the cockpit here and uh, had it glowing from the inside, so that was really cool. It's a neat little uh, trick. So, here you go. That is the Blockade Runner. Very, very cool. So here you have it. Here is the Blockade Runner box and the Death Star box. They are the same size. And there's also some uh, Yamato uh, Mecha Collection kits that have the same size box as well. Now this is the Model Graphics Magazine I was mentioning. Let me just show you that real quick. So, let me flip to the where is it? This is the hobby show information here. Let's get to the good part here. Um, where is it? <laughs> Crap, hold on. Okay, I, I found it. This is it here. So, Rokugan <clears throat> is the modeler who did this. And I, actually, I've, uh, I've met him and got to talk to him for a little bit once. He printed out an underside section of a Star Destroyer. <laughs> really cool. So, yeah, so here is the pictures here of how he ran some wire. Perhaps that's magnet wire, I think. Um. Hmm. Polyurethane. Copper wire. Uh, maybe that's magnet wire. Um, maybe that's what they call that. I'm not sure. Um. Yeah, so like, uh, for example, SMDs in Japan, they call them chip LEDs. They, they don't really uh, use the same terminology. But like here is the the light for the bridge here. That's really cool. So you got the, the engine sections with the, the wires coming out of them. So very, very cool. And there's the, the lighted bridge glowing there. That's really fantastic. Very cool. So... On the same, oh yeah, I'll get to these next, don't worry. On the same day, this was released. This is R4i9. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. But uh, the plastic it comes in a like a really glossy, like a black-green kind of a color. Uh, I thought this, on the, the Star Destroyer, I think, isn't, I'd have to watch the movie again. I know there was one of these guys in the docking bay where the Millennium Falcon was, was being stored. And there was this one just kind of like uh, going off around in the, in the background when there's a scene where the stormtroopers are speaking, I believe. Maybe this is another one that was in the, the hallway. Or maybe it was, they used the same one. I'm not sure. It just it looked a lot blacker to me. Like pitch black. 
So anyhow, this has these little cups here, these clear parts. This has the R2-D2 head, so you can, um, it doesn't come with a complete R2-D2, but if you want to, you can add this head to your existing R2-D2 kit, and see it has the tray for the drinks here. Now you're not getting any decals with this, you are only getting stickers, but, you know, that's kind of too bad, but again, maybe you can use these as masks. So maybe just just roll with what you got. So here is the head. So it comes in two halves. And here's his body. Neat, neat stuff. Alright, let's move on to another model here. So yeah, I got these together. I got those six kits of the uh, the blockade runner. Here we have the Ikaruga. Now I never got this before, actually. Um, the one that I had purchased before was the two-player Ikaruga kit, which is called the Ginke. This is the one I had before. The this is in case you don't know, it's from the Sega Dreamcast game. Actually, uh, it was in the arcades. I played it when it first came out in the arcades in Japan, and then it was released on the Dreamcast and then later on the GameCube. This is like uh, like what they're on the turn of the century or so. I think it came out in like 2000 or so. So yeah, it even says right here it's called the Ginke. Now, the, this is, again, this is the two-player version ship. This is the first-player version ship. This has been re-released. So I'm pretty happy about that. Very, very cool. Okay. So. I never got around to getting this. And then, because it had been sold out, I was out of print. This kit was going up in price. So the Ginke is being re released, I think, in February? You're probably also going to get the black variants of these ships as well. They're going to be re released. So, very cool. Very freaking cool. Now, this also has a uh, sheet of decals as well. So, the ships are just so simultaneously elegant and just fearsome at the same time. It's really cool. This, these are nice nice pattern decals. I believe the Ginke had more decals, I believe. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but uh, the painting instructions on this is just bizarre. I mean, it's like, are you really going to spend all that time to mixing these paints? You know, like 35% white. 30% neutral gray, 15% purple, cobalt blue is 15%, and then uh, clear yellow is 5%. I'm just probably just not going to get too uh, get too excited about that. I don't know. I'd probably just come up with my own colors, I guess. And just close approximations. But this is just a really, really awesome kit. I'm glad I finally got it. So, uh, yeah, this I had ordered... In uh, what was it, September or so, and I just had this all combined into one order. So yeah, very cool. At my local hobby shop, I picked up this. This is uh, Celine Balnock. This is her F-104 Starfighter, and it has her cute little pink heart. Now you see her here. This kit doesn't actually come with a pilot figure. I was kind of hoping it might. Um, maybe like a resin figure of her, but you're not getting it, unfortunately. Now this has a really cool paint scheme. 
And we got the, the neat heart decal here. This is a newer kit. I, I thought maybe this kit was like uh, an older kit with the raised panel lines and such, but no, it actually has recessed panel lines. And nice cockpit interior. In fact, the one thing I noticed with looking at pictures of, the, of this, uh, so here is the ejector seat here. Okay, and you got the, the two sides of the ejector seat. It's got the it's got the pull rings on the ejector seat. Where are, where are they? No, wait. What the hell is this? Is that the seat or not? Is there a two-seater? I'm not sure what that is. Well, it looks like this is the proper seat here. And um, here are the pull rings here. Which is a really nice touch. It does not have a uh, pilot, but I guess you can get a pilot figure. Um, you're just going to have to... I don't know. Wouldn't be too much of a womanly figure, I guess. Uh, interestingly enough, though, is that this does actually have the hearts for her helmet. So it would have been cool if they had a resin figure for her, but, you know, whatever. I guess when she's wearing a bulky flight suit, um, you wouldn't really see much of the uh, shape of her breasts, I guess. So you just pass off just a guy pilot as, as for her. I don't know. Um, this is kind of interesting though, it has the, uh, the German decals as well. So, but then here, here's the Area 88 decals here. Um, this has clear parts for the, the nav lights. See, that's what all of these are here. And on the fuselage, so you've got these like right here, and there's another one right here, you would put those clear parts on here. If you really wanted to light these up, you could. In fact, and I was really surprised to see this, it has a clear cast um, instrument panel here. Pretty wild, I thought. That's pretty cool. So, actually, I, I um, I had this ordered through my local hobby shop and uh, came in. So uh, where I live, the hobby shops might not have more specialty uh, type of um, you know specialty kits like this, but uh, that's what online ordering is for, I suppose. I believe this is last. Now, let me pull this crap back in here. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm wasting time here. Uh, okay. Yeah, Lockheed Martin. Isn't that great? Okay. Two more additions. Now, I have not yet started these at all. But, yeah. Um... We're all the, all the way up to number five and number six here. So this is Claire Frost with the Hughes 500. And uh, uh, Mayuki Sara. She flies a T4. That's the, the Japanese um, uh, trainer planes. And in fact, this is the same airplane as the Blue Impulse, what they fly. So let's open this up. Uh, of course, it's going to have these fantastic decals. And you get several chances to get her eyes right, which is nice. So, yeah, it's a medical helicopter. She's got her... There we go. She's got her, uh, her shots. She works for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. She's going to be... Uh, Sterilizing thousands of uh, women in Africa for uh, under the guise of vaccinations or something. <laughs> Sick as hell. 
Oh god, I need to do something about the vaccines. So anyhow, here is the resin figure. Comes in different parts. You can maybe possibly do her hair separately and then attach it to her head, which is very useful, I think. It's got that cute little hat. And of course, you're going to have these these uh, cross decals for her hat as well. So, yeah, neat stuff. And of course, it has the regular egg plane helicopter here to go along with it. So, yeah, the girls are uh, 120th scale resin figures. Really, really like the addition of the. Uh, the decals for the eyes, of course. So, now this girl is a brand new eggplant girl. Come to think of it, you know, they, they do have these other eggplant girls that don't have names. I'm like, who's this girl? Well, what's her name? <laughs> yeah. I haven't really fleshed her out. So, anyhow, uh, here. Let me see the decals here. Oh my gosh, that's cool. So yeah, she's dressed up as a, as a schoolgirl wearing her PE uniform. So she's um, class six. <laughs> yeah. In Japan, the, the kids they have classes together, and then the teachers move around. Whereas you know, like I'm from America. In high school, the, we would move around and the, the teacher stayed in one room. So it's a different education system here. So yeah, you get the three chances to get her her uniform right. You got three chances to get her eyes right, depending on which way you want her to be looking. And so here she is. Very cool. It looks like um, is her, is her, is that supposed to be like that? Or maybe, uh, cut that down and sand it down, I don't know. But yeah, she's wearing the PE bloomers that kids, actually they don't really wear these anymore. Um, this is more of an 80s thing, it's still kind of a fetish I guess, but, um, yeah, the, uh, the PE uniforms nowadays, they're a little bit more modest. So you got these gates to chop off and sand them down too. But again, you got the hair is, is separately molded here so as well. So yeah, I built the egg plane Blue Impulse kit. So this is uh, basically just the same kit all over again. It's a different color scheme. And of course, naturally, different decals. So that is my acquisition stack. Now let me show you what I've been working on. Now I have... I actually I have a, a video so far of this. I guess I can upload this. This is my uh, F-15 Eagle. Actually F-15J. That I had started, and I need to prime this. I haven't gotten around to priming it yet, but I did paint the intakes, and then so I uh, masked off the intakes, and then that's what all this junk is all about here. So yeah, I need to proceed with that, and I also have. This F-14 Tomcat. Probably going to be doing this as the Jelly Rogers. My daughter really likes the skull, and I'm kind of, you know, that was originally the reason why I got this. Not not so much the Sundowners, but the the Jelly Rogers. So, yeah, I've uh, gotten pretty far on this. I just need to do some. Uh, some priming. And since I started that, and I'm going to be painting it basically the same color as this, I started the Eggplane Tomcat as well, so it's going to be the same colors. 
So it didn't really want to fit together very well. Kind of have like a, the, the shape here is a little bit odd. Just uh, the way that the two parts fit together it wasn't really quite the best. And I just was just going crazy with egg planes. Actually, uh, I was inspired after the um, the air show I went to. I, I wanted to do these uh, F2s, the Mitsubishi F2s. So basically, this is the F-16 Falcon egg plane, but it has different parts. So uh, of course, it's it's super deformed, so that you're not going to get the proper proportions. But the main difference between a Mitsubishi F-2 and an F-16 Falcon is uh, the F-2 has larger wings, has has a wider wingspan, and this part here on the tail fin this is a little bit different. You have this extra augmentation. I don't know what this is. Is this like a camera or something? I don't know. But that part is different. So, anyhow, yeah, I'm just going to be priming a whole bunch of kits. So, I got those started. Um, I started doing some video on that. I'm just going to release videos of that whenever, I guess. Um, I guess I can start uploading videos of the the Tomcat, the 72nd scale Tomcat, and I do have two of those videos completed so far. Just haven't gotten around to uploading them. Also, I started last weekend. Started working on two of these Daryls simultaneously, and these are easy. Just you know, these mecha collections are pretty quick builds. I'm gonna have one here with the the flight deck, and I'm gonna have this one as the the the, the cannon that is you know can flip out. This is gonna be the Daryl, and then this one's gonna be the Morangal. Uh The Morangal was featured in the 2199 Yamato movie, uh, The Ark of the Stars. And it has that uh, jagged like pseudo camouflage kind of a pattern to it and uh, so yeah gonna be doing uh, doing a du dual build of this you'll see a video of those whenever whenever I get around to it so that is what's on the bench um, so you've seen this we're gonna hopefully finish this up I've been mostly working on this when at my in-laws place and the egg plane van is pretty much done. I just need to buff out some of the the parts where I kind of you know was touching it a little bit too much, but other than that, it's done. So yeah, uh, look for a video of that hopefully pretty darn soon. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. So, and I'm still just like 99% complete of this Destroid. I'm going to have that hopefully uploaded soon. It comes with this Minmei figure and doing her eyes at that tiny little scale is a little bit difficult. I'll get around to that later. The Yurdi and K Dirty Pair figures are coming along just great. Um, those are going by pretty quickly, I think. Again, Yurdi has decals that my my friend helped to design, and I'm going to just do uh, Kay's eyes on my own. So, here's I'm gonna show you some nerds bait that I've gotten. Yeah, so this is the new oh well Star Blazers, but it's Yamato 2199. This is part two of the DVD really great. Looking forward to hopefully they're going to be releasing the Ark of the Stars movie on, on uh, well this is Blu-ray Blu and DVD combination, right? And this is actually just the case. I got the, the actual disc in the in the other room. So yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. I got that from Right Stuff and fortunately for me, Right Stuff will deliver to Japan. This is Bubblegum Crisis. This is uh, 
pardon me, this is like a like a reference file book for the first episode of Bubblegum Crisis. This is pretty darn cool. So you get this neat poster in here. Look at that. Isn't that great? So yeah, apparently this is only the first the first episode of the original 1980s Bulligan Crisis, but it's got lots of these really neat photographs, right? These sketches of the city are pretty darn cool looking. Very cool. And again, it's got that uh, Blade Runner slash Akira slash originally it was um, uh, Mobius. And I never did get that that uh, comic book of Mobius that had inspired Blade Runner. I really need to. It, once in a while it gets reprinted and then it goes back up in price. But very cool. Very cool. So it even has like, uh, what was that? The 80 police. You got the rifles. Looking very pulse riflery looking. That's pretty cool. Got the police cars and everything. Pretty freaking cool. We got the boomer designs. Of course, you get the hard suit designs and how they go on. So, oops, oh, I just saw something really awesome. What was it? Oh, there we go. There's the the hard suits and when they plug into the the moto slaves, which are you know the the motorcycles when they transform. Pretty cool looking boomer art here. Very cool. That was another uh, neat city cityscape here. So Cynthia and Frederick. Yeah, again, this is only the first episode. Uh, I'll have to see if there's any others for the other episodes, but this is the only one I've seen. So pretty cool. Now, so G Kawamori fans rejoice. Oh yeah, I, I I am working on the the fighters from Crusher Joe. Um, yeah, never fear. I'm, I'm going to hopefully have those uh, completed before the Hasegawa kids come out. And there's a very young Kawamori right there with his legendary eyebrows. The dude has like the most badass eyebrows ever. I swear, so cool. So, like, uh, yeah, check this out. No, that's very cool. The Minerva. There's the fighter. And, of, of course, these are, like, prototype designs and such. Um, here's the Austal. Got the, the Minerva, the way it looks. The way uh, it's supposed to. There's the Fighter 1 and Fighter 2. Very neat stuff. There's a Galleon. There's Dongo. And there's a bunch of prototype you know, sketches of what Dongo may have looked like. And there's the Cordova. And the Dragoon. I have a kit of the Dragoon. It's like a small kit. Don't have the Cordova nor the Minerva. But yeah, Sh Shoji Kawamori. You know, um, he's the guy who did the uh, Macross. As well, here we go. Here's the siren and the harpy. Very cool. There, so this is the Austal Skate Boy. Oops. The, 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 the Godfly Crawl Crawler. The discount, and there's the powered suit there. So you got these neat rifles and crap. And here is just uh, Color Marty sketches, just black and white. This is just so cool. I tell you, this is awesome. You even get to see what the instrumentation panels look like, and as well as the seats. Very, very cool book here. So uh, this is year did this come out? I'm not even sure. Doesn't even say. 
But yeah, this is just like a magazine book from back in the day. Ah. I don't know where there's a date on this. Okay, Showa 58. So this would be 1983, I believe. So yeah, there's Kawamori again. So very cool stuff. Neat, 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 neat. Also of note, this is the January 2019 issue of Model Graphics. And pretty cool article on R4I9. And they've painted him up as R4M9. And so this guy is uh, was seen on the Tantive 5, which was Princess Leia's blockade runner. And you can see him being uh, uh, hauled away with a bunch of rebel troops, the, the fleet troopers. So this article talks about R4M9 here. And it says here, um, the base they used, Mr. Color 14, navy blue. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, and it says they used the Hasegawa mirror finish on uh, these, these parts here on the arms. And it also mentions Mr. Collar 55 khaki and with just a little bit of black to get this color here. So like I have khaki like this is khaki green right? Is it, is it khaki or khaki green? Yeah this is khaki. So it's a l not quite the same color. It's a little bit darker, so you just you had to add a little bit of black to it to get this color here. This is really cool. Really cool. Now, they had this on display at the All Japan Hobby Show in September. I don't know if they're going to be re-releasing this guy with stickers to do the, the green stripes or not. But if you want to do your own masking, it wouldn't be too hard, I suppose, to recreate this astromech. Now you also got this guy here, R4T8. What was he seen in? I'm not sure. Um, Dexter's Diner? So this is a scene in the prequel apparently. I don't remember that, but whatever. I guess it's been a while since I've seen the stupid prequels, I guess. But, shoot, compared to Last Jedi, I guess they're... <laughs> so anyhow, this is uh, R4E1. Remember this guy? No, me neither. Um, he was seen on Tatooine, though, so... There you go. Um... It says episode four, so there you have it. If you don't remember him, I guess you suck, just like me. But, um, oh, something else. Um, so you got these these two astromechs here. These are due in, sep sorry, January. Yeah, both of these are due January. So this is R5J2, and then this is R2Q5, and I believe this guy... Oh yeah, okay, he was in Return of the Jedi. Um, this is, he's also in the Return of the Jedi. He was uh, on the, the Death Star. Yeah, both of these apparently, they were on the, the Death Star. Here's the Empire Strikes Back. Uh, 350 scale Millennium Falcon is coming out with, with the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 landing gears. So, it should be making everybody happy. Um, this actually here, this is the other B-Wing. The one with the, the open parts on the wings. 
with some other details and this has the human pilot instead of the Celestin pilot this will come packaged with an LED and this is basically the uh, um, blue blue fin the San Diego Comic Con it really wasn't an exclusive because you can just get it from Bluefin's website but uh, this is yeah the other B-wing that is being uh, that was released for North America and now this is coming to Japan this is going to be a premium Bandai exclusive and I've already got my pre-order for this guy So as far as crappy comments go, I haven't gotten any this month. Wow. I am always happy when that happens. At the same time, though, I'm also kind of disappointed because it's kind of fun to uh, kind of poke fun at uh, stupid people who, who uh, always, always give me crap. So um, because I didn't get any, I went ahead and made some crappy comments on my own, so please enjoy. You suck. Great. I swear to God, this Greg guy is a total douche nozzle. Don't you think so, Icky? Oh, oh, oh that's so true. Oh, 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 crap. Yeah, so why don't you do that impression of Greg and how stupid he is? Go ahead and do no, it. No, I don't feel like it. Go do it yourself. Do it now or I'll beat your stupid little ass. Meow. No, oh, fine. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is great. <laughs> Meow. Okay. Money was crap. <laughs> so funny, he's so stupid, oh my gosh. Uh, take that, you son of a bitch. Oh, that hurt you, little bastard. I'm gonna get you, meow. You're dead meat. Meow, meow, meow. Oh, crap. So once again, Kevin T wins it. This is in regards to the, <coughs> excuse me, the Crusher Joe fighter. He said, Getting tired of coming here and seeing videos with less than cinema quality, zero special effects, no digital sound, and seemingly zero production value. Wow! Starting to think maybe this is racially motivated. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Oh my, and then down below, Pink Coffee Boat says, uh, You know, I was watching this video and thinking what a display of toxic white male privilege. I'll only watch any more of your videos if you have a more diverse range of presenters. Ultimately, I'll only be happy if you're replaced with a black trans who identifies itself <laughs> with being a new breed of mutated frogs that are gender nonspecific. <laughs> <laughs> oh, midgets. Oh, this is great. And uh, <laughs> another great one. Again, this is Kevin. This is uh, the Dirty Pair. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. Stop objectifying plastic. P.S. Thanksgiving is ce the celebration of the tragedy of colonization. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... I've got something planned for the finale to the Egg Playing Girls van, so stay tuned for that. So that is it for this month. Thanks for sticking out to the end, and as always, live long and prosper. How does it go? <laughs> I'm tired. Live long and prosper. May the force be with you, and so long, and thanks for all the finish. Goodbye.